Williams Episcopal Church in Painesville, Ohio. I'm Mother Vanessa and delighted that you can share this time of worship with us. We use the Book of Common Prayer for our service and if you don't have a copy at home, a digital copy is available online. A link to that is found in the description of our video along with a link to our readings and our psalm for this morning. Let us begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, right to the Holy Eucharist. Page 355. In the middle of the page for Easter Tide. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing on, 356 at the top of the page with the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You, you alone, alone are the Lord, Lord. You, you alone are the Most High, High Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the, the glory of God the Father. Father. Amen. The Collect of the Day is found on page 225, page 225, the fourth Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O, o God. God whose Son, Jesus, is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now for the readings and our sermon by our seminarian, a postulant to the priesthood, Megan Carlson. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was re rejected by the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please join us in reciting Psalm 23 as translated in the Book of Common Prayer on page 612. We share the psalm responsively breaking at the asterisk. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything beloved if our hearts do not condemn us we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him and this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, O Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. One of the things that I'm really excited about in my seminary studies is learning about the languages of the scriptures and what layers of meaning are in a word in Greek or Hebrew that we tend to miss in English. Here at Seminary of the Southwest, we aren't required to learn a biblical language, but nevertheless, we've learned a lot of really important Greek words in our study of the New Testament. One of the biggest ones is dikaiosune which is often translated into English as righteousness. It's the word used in the Sermon on the Mount um, in Matthew, when Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Another way to translate that word into English is justice. When I first heard our 23rd Psalm read in Spanish, I realized that what they're saying is, me guiara por sendas de justicia por amor de su nombre. He leads me in paths of justice for love of his name. 
I find it interesting in our current context that the words righteousness and justice almost seem to have two completely different meanings. Righteousness has taken on a very individualistic tone. We hear it in the phrase, he's so self-righteous. But it's also from a really narrow way of reading Paul that sees justification as a personal sense of being made righteous before God. Whereas justice, for us in the United States today, often conjures up images of injustice or a justice that is incomplete. The Chauvin trial verdict that we heard this week is just an example. A small step towards justice seems to have been done, but it's a drop in a large pool of incidents of police brutality, especially against people of color. These concepts of righteousness and justice, these popular concepts, are completely antithetical to the first century understanding of dikaiosune. Righteousness, being made right in God's sight, following God's commandments, was almost synonymous with justice, doing right in the eyes of our fellow human beings. We see this idea in the first letter of John. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. This is the Sunday that is known in the church as Good Shepherd Sunday, because our lectionary has us read the 23rd Psalm and the Good Shepherd passage from John today. Now the early church saw this connection between the Psalm and the gospel, the ideal leader of God's people as a shepherd like David and Jesus the Messiah. The ideal leader of God's people is one who was willing to lay down his life for those in his care. This way of laying down one's life for others is not easy. There's a painting by the African-American artist, Henry Oswa Tanner of The Good Shepherd, whose landscape is inspired by the artist's travels in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. In this painting, the shepherd and his flock look tiny next to the gaping chasm of the cliffs they are traversing. These paths of justice and righteousness are narrow ways. The good news we hear today is that our leader, our good shepherd, cares about us being in right relationship with God and with each other. We have a shepherd who cares about the weakest of us, the most maligned of us, enough to leave all the rest behind to rescue that one. We have a shepherd who doesn't pass by the man who's been left for dead on the road, beaten, but he stops and picks him up and binds his wounds. We have a shepherd who will not rest until he has rescued those of us who have fallen into pits of loneliness and despair. And he asks us to go and do likewise. Our path through these valleys of death and shadows is to emulate the one who embodies the word of God, the word of reconciliation, liberation, and love. The Venerable Bede once said, Christ has taught by his example, with his own passion, what kind of love we ought to have in us. Every day we have choices before us, like the footprints of our shepherd, that lead us in the way. We can choose the self-centered way, the way that's all about consumption and profit, the way that's about getting what we want, regardless of how it affects anybody else. Or we can choose the way of laying down our lives the way of putting the needs of others before our own, especially those of us who are poor or weak or sick or in any other way seen as less than by our society. And we can choose to follow in this way by being gentle, by being loving, by being courageous and being peacemakers. I want to close with a prayer by Sister Melanie Svoboda of the Sisters of Notre Dame. Good Shepherd, guide me, lead me. Go before me and show me the way, the right path to follow. Help me to put aside all bad habits that lead only to barren wastelands. Curb my wandering that takes me away from you and the companionship 
of my fellow believers. Be gentle with me. Be patient. Inspire me with your teachings and the example of your complete selflessness. Share with me your vision of the reign of God. Inspire me to work to make that vision a reality. And finally, dear shepherd, help me to lead others as you are leading me. Amen. Thank you, Megan. You are a joy. We continue on page 358 with the Nicene Creed. 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's prayers of the people come from the Episcopal Church, as recommended by presiding Bishop Michael Curry and our own Bishop Mark Hollingsworth in this season of reconciliation. The congregation's response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, William, and Arthur, our bishops, for all ministers, lay and ordained, and for all who seek you. Equip us with love to carry out your work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and for all nations, for peace across barriers of culture, race, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, for all who serve our country here and abroad, that they would serve the common good. Equip us with love to transform hatred, resist evil, and unite the human family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for your creation, for animals and birds, for mountains and oceans, for forests and lakes. Grant us wisdom to bequeath this legacy of beauty and abundance to our children and our children's children. Equip us with love, to protect the earth and all its resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our leaders and our first responders, for our schools and stores, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, justice, and opportunity. Equip us with love to strive for peace among our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for those in any need or trouble, for all those on our prayer list, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick, suffering, isolated and despairing, especially victims of this pandemic. For those facing violence, degradation, 
and systemic injustice. Equip us with love to seek and serve Christ in all persons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation, those who have worked for justice, for prophets who call us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Equip us with love to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your good time all nations and races will serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Being assured of God's grace and Christ's salvation, we do not have a public confession in Easter time. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace. On behalf of the vestry, your wardens, Travis and Tom, and our treasurers, thank you for your generosity and your dedication, your witness to Christ in this world, and your devotion to, to Jesus' mission here through St. James. If you wish to send in your donation, you can do that the regular way by using the address that's printed in the description of our video. You can also donate online securely at our website. And now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Mystic Prayer A, found on page 361. From the Book of Common Prayer, Ministration to the Sick. If a person desires to receive the sacrament, but is unable to eat and drink the bread and wine, let that person be assured all benefits of communion are received. As I consume the sacrament on your behalf as your priest, please join in a prayer of spiritual communion with my husband, Mark. Page 361, Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live as one of us, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many and for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We're calling his death, resurrection, and ascension we offer you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them spiritually in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Be present, O Jesus, our great high priest, as you were present with your disciples at Emmaus. Be known to us now in the breaking of the bread and the blessing of the wine. Grant that while we are separated in body, we are knit together in spirit by the mystery of your most precious body and blood. We ask this grace of you, O Jesus, who live and reign with Almighty God and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the post-communion prayer on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty and ever-living ever God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful, faithful witnesses of Christ, Christ our Lord, to, to him, to you, and to and the Holy Spirit, Spirit be honor and glory, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We hope you're able to join us for the 1130 Zoom coffee hour. The credentials are on the private Facebook page. They're the same ones you used last week. And if you need those, you are welcome to email me with the email address found in the description of our video. I continue, and our vestry continues to get questions about when the space will be opened up and we can meet each other face to face, or at least masked face to face, and that time is not yet here. We have agreed that we'll wait until the county threat level is in orange before we are indoors and in person. The vestry continues to seriously consider other options. A task force has been put together and we'll be reporting to Vestry this week on Thursday. And we'll see what we can do to make sure that we keep each other safe, both those who are unvaccinated and those who may be vaccinated but at risk. Please continue to mask up, wash up, and keep your distance for love of each other and of the church. And now for a blessing from Easter. A blessing from the Book of Occasional Services for Easter. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.